Hello, everybody, and welcome to another PMP end of month review. So what is this? Well, this is where we sit down and we spend some time going over all those folks who submitted work into the PMP. That's our painters motivating painters uh, for review, specifically in the December review event. So if you want to join us in the PMP, the Painters Motivating Painters Facebook group, the link is down in the description. Feel free to uh, click that. You have to answer all of the questions. If you do not answer all of the questions, we will not let you in. doesn't matter if you answer two out of the three or one out of the three. It's three out of three or you don't get in. That's how it goes. Uh, but every month we invite our members to post, if they would like, a finished project, one finished project, uh, into the uh, into the end of month review event. You can access those through the events uh, item over here on the side where you see those. It'll then take you to the monthly reviews. You can post in the current month's review, and at the end of the month, I go through and uh, try to answer everybody's questions. As usual, like just give feedback on the piece. Now, as usual, I ask that when you post this, it's not only finished, but you ask for specific direction. It helps me a lot if I can know what you're going for. And so actually provide feedback in the direction of what you're trying to answer. So I don't go down a rabbit hole that, uh, you know, that you're not interested in feedback on. So if it was a speed paint, you want to know how you can do things, you know, better, faster, that's I'm going to be a much different feedback than you know, I'm painting a golden demon piece and I'm trying to take this to the absolute highest level, right? So the more information you give me, the better the information I can give you. Uh, so uh, also down in the description, you will find a link to a previous video that has an introduction of common things I give feedback on. So if I say more tonal variation or non-metallic metal or referencing gems or, or uh, more contrasting your true metallic metal, stuff like that. Um, all of that is explained in detail in the video linked below, so I don't have to keep re-explaining it over and over again here. Um, I do try to move through these things quickly. I really enjoy doing this, but at the same time, there's a lot of submissions, and I have to move through them rather quickly. Uh, otherwise, I'll be here until we get together next month to do this again. So, at any rate, uh, like I said, links in the description if you want to join us, whether you're a newbie in the hobby or a master, it doesn't matter. We'd love to have you along. We welcome people of all skill levels. Uh, but with that being said, let's go ahead and get into this month's review. So on screen, we've got Chris Lang. He's got his second ever finished diorama, and he uh, wanted to focus on the balancing the direction of the piece. Sure. As well as just kind of overall impression. So let's let's take a look here. I'm just kind of clicking through all the photos. I think direction of the piece, you're certainly in the right place. Everybody's moving together. Um, so I think that works. Um, as far as the actual, I mean, on the whole, the piece is good. I will say one thing you want to focus on when you're doing something big like this is things to draw attention. So let me see if I can explain what I mean. If you go and watch my video on composition of dioramas, you'll see a lot of what I'm talking about. So it's not just the line. Like, yes, there's a line here, and you've kind of balanced it with this tree here to kind of move everything this direction. But also we want to make sure that the attention is is tightly focused on our figures. One of the ways we can do that is often with lighting. So you put more bright stuff up here on the top and as well on his face. Like, ultimately, this, this thing, this piece comes down to two pieces of information. His face and Johan's face, right? That's where we need to be looking. And so, and then this guy, I suppose, as well. But it's really like these two seem that the action of the piece. Um, so we want to make sure this is the area that's brightest, that has the most color, that draws the eye. So popping up the non-metallic metal here um, and, and things like that. Having more bright colors on the ground here and then deepening the shadows down here. So like all of your earth is relatively samey colored. Casting some of this earth on the side in deeper shadows would help to draw the eye up here to the brighter spot. Beyond that, the only thing that jumps out at me looking through the photos is just, you know, I mean, it's a big piece, so it's it's hard to say. But um, one of the things that jumps out at me is we want to make sure we uh, we smooth out some of those bigger pieces, especially on some of the larger models, like some of the NMM, stuff like that. You want to bring some more glazing into that to kind of get it uh, smoothed out. But it's certainly a very creative, original, you know, crazy piece. So I, I dig it. Um, it's got a lot of motion. It's got a lot of movement. I, I do feel you captured all that well. So hope that helps. Great stuff. 
All right. Howard Kyle uh, wants some tips on glazing and things like that. And, you know, talks about how kind of sometimes it was pulling off uh, some paint. So one of the keys with glazing, let's go to this guy because this is a nice front end. Um, one of the keys with glazing is you always want to make sure that the other layers are dry. The other thing I notice here is we've got a very glossy finish, and that's because you used a lot of glazes. When you go super medium heavy, it's going to get shiny. Uh, so you want to make sure you mat that back down. And one of the ways you can do that is by varnishing in between. Um, so as you're working with glazes, you can apply some. You have your initial paint, you have whatever. Just go over, give it a coat of some nice varnish. I prefer an AK Interactive Ultra Matte Varnish, but you can even do satin in the middle. Um, and who cares? Because it'll let you, um, it'll let you like, who cares if the shine comes up a little in the middle, if at the end you just varnish over everything. Think of the varnish like a safe point. Once you put a good layer of like a satin or a matte varnish over it, you're not going to have any, it, it'll, and let that dry completely. It'll really prevent that peeling effect. And the glazes will travel more smoothly over the newly varnished surface. So it'll help you both have smooth applications of your glazes, and it will help you, um, uh, make sure you don't affect any other layers of paint. Uh, so there you go. I hope that helps. Beyond that, I would say keep pushing the glazes. Things like his stomach, his little tum-tum is still a little too singular monocolored. I want to make sure we have some nice variation in that. It'd be great to push into maybe like the purple tones you have up here on the bottom of his belly. That way we establish a nice color triangle. So just things like that jump out of me. But overall, I love the colors. You really establish a nice, bright, uh, eye-catching piece. So I think it's really cool. Okay, Alexandru, uh, both entries in different categories in a local painting competition, more interested in general composition and basing and making them pop more, what can be improved? Okay, sure. So I would say you can you can push your true metallics a little farther. So the first thing that jumps out at me is some of this can get pushed farther, especially deepening shadows on the true metallics. That's the first item that comes out at me, especially with all that metal. Um, you really want to get some nice soft glazes of, of a black ink or a black blue ink or a blue ink or something like that in there. You got a lot of blue in these pieces, so having some blue reflections in the metal from things like, like his robe is popping way out. He's summoning a bunch of blue magic. There should be some light blue colors in the steel to help pop it up. Um, as far as the other things that jump out at me that we could do, <coughs> more tonal variation, especially on the bird. The bird is boring. Um, we didn't focus enough attention on the big bird. So like more where he's color shifting more, have him branch out into some different tones. If you look at how a lot of people handle this sort of griff uh, charger thing, they'll often have him switching color tones, especially as you go up his head, his face, um, these little tail feather fur things he's got down here, the feathers down here on his arm. Like these are all good opportunities to work alternative colors in. Um, they can be in red and blue, so it works with the rest of your scheme. Having it pop some more of that blue and spread it around the monster would help the Stormcast and the monster feel more integrated. Um, so I do think you have the tonal variation on the cloaks. I think that looks really nice. I think your blues and reds are really, really strong here. Um, so I think that's in the right place. You want to glaze some of this some more with some mid-blue. Um, as usual, the challenge with blue is when you start adding lighter blues, it becomes very hard to to blend because a blue gets lighter by the addition of white. Um, so as it goes up the tint scale, um, it becomes much more uh, opaque. And that sudden shock and change in opaqueness means that you have often have to go back in with your very thin layers of your darker blue lace to get that nice and smooth. Uh, those are really the big items that jump out at me. So I hope that helps, but uh, awesome stuff. I like, the, I like the colors, I like the magic. They feel very magical. You definitely captured all that. All right, Corey, uh, he brings us a couple armagers, and his question is uh, some feedback on the chipping and rusting effects, and also what tips should you do to create better-looking desert bases? Sure. So, you know, on the chipping and rusting effects, I mean, my first thing I think is we can go farther. Also, I'm always, I'm always hesitant about green airbrush stuff like that. Let me just point that out, like... If I'm going to do a big section of green on here, I'd put green other places in the miniature, like have some of these tubes or, you know, something showing green, something glowing green somewhere else. Like that should be spread around a little more rather than just one bright, overwhelming spot. Like this image looks a lot better than this image because this is so overwhelming and just airbrush OSL, right? Like it doesn't, doesn't sell super well because it's just like, why is this much, why is this color green this much? Like where is the light hitting this part of it so strongly? So I'd be careful about stuff like that. Now, onto the chipping and weathering. I think you could go farther, honestly. Like, I think the little chips look good. You could focus a little more on some of the edges. And then I think what we want to see is streaking. 
a little more streaking where things have collected and ran down. Now, he, if he's in a more desert environment, there's probably not a lot of rain, but there can still be moisture, humidity, things that gather. So you could have just some very light streaks, um, stuff like that. You could also go for, if he's on in the desert, he's getting sand blasted. So you could go for a little bit more of like a sand type weathering where you're stippling around some light white or something like that around those edges. Um, look at like Google images of cars that have sat in the desert and you'll see what I'm talking about where they get sort of blasted over time and fade a lot. Um, so that's kind of my, my thought on that one. Uh, but overall, I mean, I think it's a cool piece. I like the color. I'd love to see it popped out a little more with, you know, something to spruce up, especially this big flat open area here, like just, you know, a vertical line, a decal, you know, something to give me some more visual interest in those large areas. Now, as to the desert base itself, um, more verticality changes. So start, you know, build some hills, put your sand over top skulls uh you know you've got a lot of good stuff there deserts are kind of a boring biome as far if they're a very sandy desert but you can have lots of little rocks move into wastelands cracked riverbeds um all sorts of stuff like that so there's just just think of i mean really my best advice as always with basing is just google the real images of the thing just you know google images of desert landscapes and just see what all you see there there's really beautiful stuff out there um, you can have lots of different size plants, rocks, uh, verticality changes, dried riverbeds, you know, because deserts aren't rainless. They just, it rains very little. And so there'll be these like little riverbeds that collect in rivulets and stuff like that, where things get real cracked and salt choked and dry. So stuff like that is kind of what I would explore. So hope that helps. Great stuff. Okay. Ben Gom, uh, first submission, probably the first mini he's painted he's happy with. Uh, just general steps and, and next thing to aim for. Yeah, sure. So, I mean, I think this is really, really nice. Um, I like this. I like the texture on your your leather. Um, I like the, the color you used here. I mean, it is a really good mini. You should be proud of it. I really like the color blends on the cloak. I think that looks absolutely wonderful. Um, so let's talk about where we've got room to improve. So I think with the transition on some of the armor, we could smooth with a little blue tone. See previous comment I made about... Uh, smoothing out your transitions. So just like sharpening up some of these lines and getting some nice mid-tone transitions there. Also on things like this big helm, having this framework be a different color slightly than the, or, or more different than the fin in between is a nice way to make it pop and draw more attention to the head. Like right now it's very samey colored. So I'd say push that a little farther. You're like your cloaks and, you know, these things have such great contrast and this is rather flat. Same for the underwater creature here. He's very kind of not visually interesting. Like he's a major component of the, the piece here and yet he's not doing much. He's sort of this middle tone gray flesh color and that's kind of all. You know, he could have some stripes that, that integrate the colors of this. He could have like some blue stripes going down. And if he had like horizontal blue stripes, ironically, it would draw the eye back up here because you've created a big arrow pointing at the face of the miniature where we want the attention. So if you had like a ch -ch 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 going here, it would draw your eye when you sweep around and go, oh, I go down the staff. And then, oh, I'm right back up at the face. So just think about lines like that. Um, the other thing is when you get to your base, uh, you know, more stuff on the base. It's just a gray rock. Rocks aren't gray, especially underwater rocks moss flora fauna all that kind of stuff you've got a little bit of all that keep pushing more colors more greens more purples more browns things of that nature finally make sure when you've got fingers like this little fingies that they have darker lines separating them you really want them to be nice and dark like you can see my hand held up here look at how dark the lines are in between my fingers right like you can really see the separation there so make sure you you want to have those you know nice and well separated but overall it looks great so i think that would be my next steps okay uh ewan uh doing some old school chaos warriors uh so he's giving them sort of the hot weapons and eyes um just general feedback is appreciated but a focus on capes and weapons so let's take a look at these these hot hot weapons uh there we go that's a nice image for it um i think you want to shrink the white a little bit it looks better on the hammer here than it does in the axe you want to be careful with your volumes on this kind of stuff Heated things like that don't have equal volumes. Like it doesn't go X percentage of white and then the same percent and then X percentage of yellow and then X percentage of orange and so on. So you want to make sure that it's more, um, much more tilted towards the orange spectrum to the orange deep red spectrum. 
So like I would have just a light thin line of white and then mostly yellow here. And then this goes into heavy orange, like from here out and then deeper and then make more of this red black. Honestly, it, like I said, it feels better on the hammer because that's kind of what you ended up with on the hammer. So I think there you might need to pop up the whites a little more and have that nice thin line. Um, that being said, I do very much appreciate the, uh, the look of the armor, the metal. I think that all works great. Um, as far as the, uh, you know, as far as the, the bases go, obviously I, I assume these probably were still working on that one. Um, but overall the, like the glowing eyes, the weapons, that all works. The armor and stuff like that, I think looks really nice. I like the little lines and sort of scratches in there. I like the color change on the armor. Um, yes, I think all that, all that sells. Um, let's take a look back at the capes. Um, I think the capes are fine. Yeah. I don't really have any issue with them. You could... Like, if you're going for this more dirty, ragged cape look, I would honestly pop up the bottom a little bit. A little more highlights on the bottom. Maybe some dirt or something like that on the bottom. All that could be a great way to go to kind of, you know, reinforce what they're walking through. If they're in snow, you know, maybe a little bit of snow sticking to the bottom of the cape. You know, just something like that to make it feel like... The cape is very long. If he leans his head back at all, it's going to drag, right? So it would, it would catch detritus and snow and, and mud and things like that. So... That's kind of what I would, uh, what I, where I would go. But overall, you know, real cool stuff. I think it's looking good. All right, so let's keep going. Okay, so next up we've got Carl Hooten, who's, uh, you know, says basically he's trying some, t some, throwing some advanced techniques and just wants to know where he should go next. So let's take a look. Okay, so looking over the model, I mean, I think it looks really nice. You've got a lot of good stuff going on here. So my basic advice to you is going to be to, one, keep pushing that tonal variation, and two, work on really defining your, your various elements. And, and thank you for including a black and white pick. This is always a great thing to do. If you're going to include a submission, a black and white pick is awesome. Because right here, Shell tells the whole story of the tonal variation I'm talking about, right? Like, she's mostly in the same gray tone. Right, the natural light, like we haven't created any additional reinforcement of the light really through the shadows. Uh, so like when we go back to this one, having these striations in her wings picked out, um, having uh, more colors integrated in here to the wings, having brighter spots, the bottoms of these ripped holes. Um, same with her face, like her face should be the most interesting part where we're drawing our attention to. And... And yet it's pretty much a flat, even color, right? So we want to push that. Have a big difference between that and the hair she's got on her head. Um, same with like the area around her chest here where we'd want to draw in some more shadows into the center. Really be separating these elements strongly and then creating a tonal variation, a contrast without it. Something you can, so, you know, go reference the video. But then even working in other colors, so not just the variation in contrast of, of uh, uh, you know, of... of uh, value but also of hue right so working in some red shadows and stuff like that with some glazes would be a great way to push this bright red that you've got with the intestines up around the model into other places um that would really be my focus for you um is just like a lot of it is still we've got to go farther on that tone of variation it's hard you've really got to train yourself on that contrast you got to push 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 so hard um to make sure that those elements are all popping out and separated and, and run that that gamut of something so but there you go overall very cool model i dig it keep going man all right caspian uh gives us the big beholder boy here uh looking really nice uh he talked about the big eye so one thing about the big eye that i would say so let's go back to his eye um it feels like it's not round enough like the his iris um, I like the bloodshot. It could be a little, the lines could be a little thinner. So you may want to work on thinning that down or going back in with your sort of white red and kind of thinning them out there a little bit. Um, the, uh, and then uh, beyond that, I, I like the OSL glow. I think that works fine. I think the green coming up on him looks nice. Could smooth a little bit out on the teeth. It's a little stark to where it, it goes down, but overall it sells. Um, but yeah, I think the biggest thing I would focus on is making is the shape of the eye. When you have this huge eye, you have a lot of room to play with for like a lot of detail. 
So you want to make sure you're capturing the difference between the outer area of the iris and, and how there's a dark and then a light and then a dark again and the striations in the eye and the light reflection and the pupil and even a reflection in the pupil. Like you really have got the space to play here. So it's time to like go nuts and go all the way up on that eye game. Um, overall, I think though that would be my, my main piece of focus for you there. All right. But good stuff, Caspian. Okay. Uh, Jason Ho with uh, Contorted Epitome, looking for specifically feedback on the skin tones and the mirror surface blends. Sure. So uh, the skin tones, I think you have a nice smooth color, but again, you know, the, the advice is pretty similar. More tonal variation. Push me into like some deep purples, you know, maybe a bit of red shades, a pink shades, something like that to really break that out more, create more muscle structure and definition, things of that nature. Uh, now, as to the um, as to the person in the mirror, I think you did a nice job with it. Obviously, this is something I'm very familiar with. One of the things you want to do is create a little more light in the blue to stand out from the shadow. So, like, it's the shadow really sells when it's against a light surface. Um, without an airbrush, I understand. So, what you want to work on there is a little more fade. So, some light gray blaze or glazes right around here. Uh, especially on the part that's faded back. Like the hand is more solid because he's touching the surface, right? Um, so you want to make sure you fade the edges of the person who's back farther away from the mirror. So those would be my main two areas I'd tell you to, to focus on. Now, obviously this is done, so I don't know if you're going to go back to it. But if you're going to do additional daemonets, that would be kind of the, the area that I would tell you to focus on. But overall, I think you did a great job with this. I think it's a great epitome and it looks really nice. Okay, Robert Snyder. Uh, so giving us a big uh, Nagash uh, uh, conversion. So let's take a look at this bad boy. Um, as we can see, we've got a great conversion of him on the throne. Lots of sculpted cape and stuff like that. So overall, very cool stuff. Um, here we go. If we go into this shot, I think it's... Where's the one I want? There we go. That'll be a nice one to look at. That's a good angle. So... Robert, my main piece of feedback for you is going to be the same thing. More contrast, more tonal variation. So, like, a light reflections across his chest. Um, you can look at lots of examples of this. Like, you can look at super high-end examples of this, like that Land did or that Richard Gray is working on right now. So, like that, you'll see how they draw the armor out and create these light spots across the chest. So, more variation of value there. Same with the purple cloak. You know, deeper shadows up near him. Lighter colors down the bottom. Same with the bone. Like one of the problems you have right now is everything's kind of flat. Um, so we want to make sure we're really pushing that contrast, especially on a model of this size. So that would kind of, I mean, the conversion is amazing. Um, that's where I would tell you to go. Same thing, by the way, and most importantly, perhaps with the stone of his throne. Um, it's all just very flat gray stone. What I would want to see is more color worked in there. So, like, you know, go and in, in the video I talk about weathering stone and stuff, but I talk about this a lot. Um, you want to make sure that when you're dealing with stone, you have lots of different colors in it. Browns and reds and, you know, greens and stuff like that. Work all that in. Have purple glazes in there, things like that. You can go nuts with stone. Stone has every color in the rainbow in it. Additional cracks, contrast, make sure those lines are real sharp, those edges are real sharp. Do some stippling and texture and stuff like that to make it feel more naturalistic. All sorts of ways you can go. I have a video on doing realistic stone, so I would give that a watch. But those would be my main piece of advice. Fantastic conversion. Super cool Nagash. I dig the living heck out of it. Okay. Um, Sergey brings us a villain from Kingdom Death. Uh, looking for basically feedback on the leathery things of different colors. The vest, boots, gloves, and on the cape, which he says you don't know... Doesn't like and doesn't know why. So, sure. So, let's talk about the cape first, actually. Because this one's... Uh, I, I think... I, I think maybe, you know, you don't like the cape because... I don't know if you feel it's just not smooth enough. Or maybe we're not running enough of uh, a smoothness to the contrast. Like, But, like, honestly, I feel like you want to spread it out a little bit. Your light is very directional here on the cape. Like, you've told me that there is a hard light coming in from this side and no light coming back up here, right? That is to say, if the, if the light was coming directly from above, there would be some light on this side of the folds. Uh, and whereas the rest of the figure, you haven't told the same story in light. That's probably why it's not jiving with your brain. 
because your cape is telling a different light story than the figure. When we look at the figure, you've lit it from above, center noon, right? But when we look at the cloak, you've lit it from like, you know, 10 o'clock, right? Because there's just not enough color down here on these sides. So spreading out that color a little bit, I think could help. It's also quite shiny. You might want to mat it out. That might also help some in your general feeling. Now, as to the leather, um, yeah, I mean, I think the leather and the boots and stuff like that are fine. I think we could add more texture, more variation there. Especially, you know, leather's a fun chance to get the edges, to get some texture in there. You just do little tiny hashes with a sharp brush down on the edge of the leather, then glaze over it to make it look like it's got a little character. Um, that's kind of, I think, the thing that jumps out at me. But, you know, overall, it's a really nice piece. Like, you capture everything, your elements are well separated, your paint's really clean. So, I think it's on a really good road. I think we just need a little more, a little more texture in the various leathers. I, I also feel like you might want to, like, it felt like you were really trying to separate the colors of the leather. Like, the straps are different than the boots are different than the gloves. When really, we could probably do some of those in the same color. And it would, doesn't feel like she got three completely different sets of leather out, you know? Like the the straps and the gloves could be the same leather, for example, or something like that. Just a thought. In general, there's not you don't need to push it that hard. Um, I would also say with the blue, it's very... Another reason that the blue is challenging, because it only exists on the cloak. Um, I mean, you have blue cold tones in the mask. But, like, you could also have made the gloves the same blue as the cape, and that would create a much, much better triangle. Um, so just some thoughts there. It's, it's a very standalone color, and that always makes it tough, especially when it's a bright blue. Hopefully some of that helped. Okay, Luke Willoughby. Um, basically talking about coming back to the hobby. Uh, looking for his general, which is the uh, a tree lord. Um, basically looking for feedback on the model details, especially the blue areas. Some general advice in making the model and paint appear more neat and tidy. Okay, so let's take a look. Um, yeah, I mean, it, we do have some roughness here, and, you know, the way we're going to get away from that kind of roughness is, be, you know, you've got to, if you're doing your dry brushing, you've got to then go back in and smooth out with glazes. Feels like we want to thin our paints more. Nice black and white shot. Um, the black and white shot tells a nice story. It shows where we have some deep contrast in the body, but on the big wood pieces, we still need to push that a little farther. So when we look in here, especially the blue areas, yeah, you're working with a lot, very light colored blue that's going to be a naturally very chalky color. So you want to make sure that you're smoothing that out. I would work on your glazing and stuff like that. That's basically the answer. Um, because when we look here at the one that's a close-up, you can see how we can still see the texture. There's a lot of paint that broke here. You know, washes that are still showing their coffee staining, that kind of thing. We want to go back in with those controlled glazes and really smooth that out. Now, as to how to get be sort of cleaner with the whole thing, um, you know, my answer is that's a lot of finishing. Um, you can be smoother initially. And texture isn't always a bad thing. It's just got to be intentional texture. It can't look like rough paint. It's got to look like the texture of the surface it should be. But a lot of it's just brush control and time. Separation of the elements is also really important. So, like, having the face be here and different than the beard, you want to run this up darker right next to the face, right? Have a nice dark line separating it, and then have your light out here. Same with on the chest. This should all be cast in more darkness. This should be a little light. What makes something look clean is when we have this clean alternation between dark, light, dark, light, dark, light. You can see it on the fingies here as well where we don't really have a sharp line of a shadow in between how he's holding it and the rock. We want that to be a stronger separation, that kind of element. Final thing I would say is be careful when you're using these kinds of prefabricated tree elements with your trees. Like you just, this is just basing flock glued on, um, like tree flock or whatever. Be careful with that kind of stuff because you did a lot, like non-painted elements don't work on a painted thing. They stand out. And this does here. So if you're going to do this, which is fine, like I don't, the tree flock is cool. I did this myself on some stuff, but you have to paint it, right? It has to get painted just like everything else. We can't just say, well, with the rest of the model, I painted it, but this will just be green and that's good enough. That makes it stick out like a sore thumb. So go back in there, hit that with washes, do some dry brushes on that foliage, make it stand out and have texture in the same way that he does. Okay. All right. Hopefully that all helps. But uh, cool stuff, man. Welcome back to painting. Glad to have you along. Can't wait to see more uh, tree people. Okay, uh, Matthew Bamett <coughs> with some questions about basically skin tones. 
looking for other general advice, but but basically skin tone. So this is a nice model from Chimera. So this is a good shot. I mean, it's <laughs> ironic on the angle, but it's good for what I want to talk about. So this is a big scale model. And when we're working here, you know, you mentioned this is all brush only, no airbrush. That's fine. I'll, I'll talk in brush only. A lot of this stuff gets way easier with an airbrush. Let me just say that, especially on large scale models. But the thing I said earlier about finger separation couldn't be more strong here. Like this is a big scale model and there's like no finger separation here. Again, look at the dark lines in my hand, right? That's the kind of level it needs to be at. Like use those real life references. Same with the skin. I need more of every tone in here. Much, much, much more tonal variation. And that means soft glazing of red tones, of sepia tones to show tan. I need higher highlights too. She's out in the wilderness. She's a sort of forest elfy scout thing. She's going to be sweaty, right? So her skin's going to need to come up to like high popped reflections. Look how much, look at my, look at my head up here. You know, my sweaty head right sitting in this basement see this light reflection right here look at how insanely hot that spot is right same with like my nose look at my knuckles my hand when i when i make a fist like see how bright that stuff gets that's you want to make sure you're popping that up all the way so it's just a lot more tonal variation and contrast i have a couple videos on painting skin um and i show you how to do it there's there's one where i do a detailed skin tone video I would recommend you go, I would reference you back to that. Look at how much of the gamut I run between really dark and really bright, right? And that's kind of where you want to aim, all right? So beyond that, I mean, I think that's, this piece is mainly skin. That would be the major honest thing I would tell you to focus on. Because the difference between this having like a really varied skin tone showing lots of blood and red and sepia tones for tan and lines for, you know, a little coming up to like an ivory for sweat and stuff like that and reflections, it, it would, it would, it's night and day, the difference you'd feel. The rest of it's all, you know, more or less dressing on, on that. So, but it's good. Like your colors, like the war paint across the face, that kind of stuff's all going in the right direction. So it's really just the skin. I agree with you. Okay. Uh, Marco, uh, first post in the group. Well, welcome. Uh, new painter and trying to gradually improve your skills based on this mini, what technique or aspect should I focus on? Well, you know, for new painters, I always say that the main thing you want to focus on is, is brush control and, and contrast. Now, you're, you're, you're starting in a nice place here. We've got some good variation. I like this blue. I love how that runs from like a dark all the way to here. Same with the shoulders. That looks really nice. Um, yeah, I mean, I think you've got a really good base as starting here. What I would tell you to focus on is, is some smoothness, especially with the metals. So work on that a little more. Like here in the in the, your 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 parts here, you want to make sure you're smoothing that out. I would also work on your tonal variations on white. White is a really tricky color uh, because it has these elements. Like it's just it's rough to paint in. Like that's just the simple fact of it. Um, also, if you're going to introduce a red element like this, you want to make sure it's also some other places. You've got it here on the hilt and here. But like think of having some red filigree down here. Like instead of this being gold, you painted this gold reflexively because it looked like little metal hammers. But the gold is almost invisible against the white. If this had been that crimson color you're using up here, oh, it would have pop, 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 right? And then you would have had a nice balance of a triangle on the model. Uh, so I would focus a little more on soft glazing of color on the whites, you know, add some more variation into that. And then from there, it's really just brush control and cleanliness. Like I see some spaces around here where we've got some work we could clean up. But overall, this looks really, really nice, man. For, for a new painter, I think you're doing great. You're in a good place. Just keep pushing that cleanliness. Push that uh, variation on your other tones more. It looks great on the blue. Give me some in give me some similar interest on the white, S and then work on your glazes and smoothing things out. And I think you're uh, you're in a great place. But you're really kicking it. You're really uh, you're you're really kicking butt there, Marco. Great stuff. Okay, uh, Rednecks, uh, winning submission for his LGS's painting competition last weekend. Struggled with attaching the spider in a way that conveyed the idea of the spider dropping down the hero. By the time we were judging, the spider had dropped to where it was touching the table. Considering I was using Widskid's minis, how would you have handled it? Beyond that, I'm working on just true metallic metal and skin tone. Okay. Sure. So let's uh, let's take a look here. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, well, we got to get some better photos. So let's start there. Uh, okay, so let's start back here. Satin effect on the cloth, dig it. Looks nice, good lines, good work. 
I, I enjoy that. I enjoy that very much. So that looks nice. Um, skin tone, see previous comments, right? Like everything I said before. Um, stuff on the shield. Watch out for true metallic metal, like freehanding with it. We need to get, I need a, I need a better photo of this, like in thing and not fuzzy. Like I need this shot, but not that, uh, like, but not fuzzy like this. So pictures are important if I'm going to review. Um, but like, watch out for using like metals in your freehand. It's always going to look strange. I think the biggest aspect I would give you is, um, you know, clean up your freehand and make sure it's nice and smooth and well applied. Uh, make sure the hair and make sure your elements are separated. So what I talked about more, you know, before with having all the elements like nice and separated and stuff like that. You're right. These sculpts are soft. It's tough. You know, stuff like the sword looks so this just looks hinky, but that's not your fault. That's the sculpt's fault. Like these just let you down. I mean, they really do because it's just a little rubber stick. It's not a sword. Um, you know, one of the things you can do is go in with your exacto knife and like actually try to cut the blade, like sharpen it directly. Um, like you just scrape it like you're as though you're literally sharpening the thing. That can be a good way to go. Um, beyond that with the metals, it's hard for me to tell exactly. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'd say with the spider, maybe a little more texture, stuff like that. It's kind of pop out this belly. He's he's light around the outside, but he would need a light spot here on his back, like a symbol or a pattern or a texture would make it look really good and make that pop and balance out. So I hope all that helps. Um, you know, give me a shot like this that's really smooth. Good pictures are very important. But very cool. I mean, it's a cool idea for sure. So, and congrats on the win. All right, Chris Click. Uh, first large model and third project painting exclusively with glazing over Zenithal. Um, ready for the table, but being such a large model and centerpiece, uh, you still think something's lacking. Okay, sure. So the answer when you're doing your, Zen your glazing over Zenithal, which I think you executed really well here, um, is on the areas where you can't do that, you want to make sure you work, work in additional colors. So I've said it a hundred times, so I'll say it again. Tonal variation, especially in the whites and the flats, are important here. So, like, this thing around his head is just doing nothing. Like, if that had some colors to it to, to set things off, honestly, I would have it be the same orange, yellow, peach combination you've got down here on the shell. That should be the co that should be the color his thing is running up top. It would bring him in line with the mount. It'd be really great. Um, more variation and, and work on the uh, metals is definitely called for here. Um, like some of the metals are very flat. Like all these are just silver, you know, just metal. We want to see more happening there. Same with the gold. Um, with the, I think the the turtle is very successful. Um, I think you could work some darker parts on separating some of these. So like when you're doing this kind of glazing, you can also come in with a heavier glaze and pull parts of the shadow, especially up here. You can get these lines a little darker with something quite thin, um, you know, stuff like that. And then wipe the, you can lay it in and then wipe the top with like a paper towel or something real quick. That's a good way to go. But the 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 chassis here or whatever they're they're like the part the, the thing that they're riding on is one of the things that stands out to me the most because the rest of your model has this great variation in color, the orange to green kind of teal look. I really like that. But then this is just basically cream. Right? So I need more more color, more variation worked in here. Softer tones of either in the white or I would also accept <laughs> excuse me i would also accept just like working in an alternative color into the shadows like bring us bring a bring a soft purple in <sighs> excuse me or bring a soft blue in or something like that right you could do a lot of work there um but overall this looks really good um so yeah those would be my advice hope that helps chris very cool turtle and i think you you know you made something real eye-catching but yes i think those would be your next steps all right uh pekka uh, Dwarf Boy from the Zealot Miniatures. Feedback on the red beard and the non-metallic metal parts. Once again, so let's start with the, uh, well, this is going to tell the whole story. I could do it all from here. You could tell me the beard was red and I could do it all from here. It is a red beard with no heat to it, no fire, no light, no variation. Red hair is very reflective. It's very bright. It's very satiny. Um, you look at like, again, Google like a Pantene Pro V hair dye bottle of red dye. And it's just going to be like, wow. You know, light lines everywhere. And and this isn't. Like, when I flip over, I'm going to see it just being basically red with, like, a soft amount of orange. We need to kick that up, right? Because when we look to the black and white, 
it's all basically the same. That tells you you haven't actually established a real true color. So more darker parts fading into like a deep red, red, black, red, purple, something like that. Even green tones down in the shadows. Um, and then catching more of those light spots, like pushing up that contrast. As to the NMM, um, it's a good start. It needs to be smoother. So like we, we jump way too strong from like here to here. Again, we can see that in the black and white, right? Like this is white and it goes straight to this gray. I need more transition throughout to smooth that that color change, right? Same with the the gold and stuff like that. So more of that smoothing of transition, and that's all. That's play in the glazing game, right? So hope that helps. Okay. Uh, oh, Alexandru. Okay, you posted twice. Well, we already gave you some. Uh, we already gave you some feedback. So same thing I said before. Okay, uh, 610, uh, just got back into Warhammer Fantasy, started a little vampire army, working on a zombie. Okay, so, looking for tonal variation, glad to hear you're on the right page already. Uh, and, um, so, you know, he said he found it easier with the skin than with the, the red pants. Let's take a look. Let's go to the black and white. I love that everybody's including these black and whites. Keep doing this. Okay, so, with red... Red is an interesting color because bright red, if it's true red, is just bright red. It doesn't go white. It doesn't go orange. It just goes really bright red, which means we work in the shadows. So go back and look at my Exploring Colors Red video. I talk a lot about how to influence the shadows. You also want to think about adding a little bit of ivory and then glazing over it with red, and that's how you pop it up. Now, on the skin, let's go back to the color shot. I think we're in a better place here. We can go farther. Give me more. You know, like you're going the right direction. I need more. Uh, push that skin really up into a flesh tone. So what I would be working in with my highlight on this is just Caucasian flesh tone. Just good old-fashioned sunny skin from Vallejo or, you know, something like that, right? Where it's... That's going to bring in the more human-esque feeling to it if you use... Any kind of skin tone, uh, be it any Caucasian or African skin tone, anything like that. You can work in anything like that, but it'll make it feel more alive like it was a zombie. That's one of the challenges we have right now is he's very green, and we need to push that highlight up even farther. Okay? So the bright side of painting zombies is it's okay. They all look dead, and, you know, you can always – they can be messy, and they can be dingy, and they can be all sorts of things. And you got to paint a lot of them, so you'll get a lot more chances to, to keep working on this. Uh, so that would be my, my best advice for you there, 610. Hope that helps. Okay, Alan Thomas. Uh, so basically, it says, couldn't normally make the Saturday Q&As, but this is a bit of a review request as well, a chance to suggest a hobby cheating, unsculpted, smooth plastic fur texture. Yeah, that's been on my list forever, Alan. I really do want to do it. I'll, I'll find a mini at some point. Maybe if there's some exposed flesh on like a knight that I'm painting soon, like a cast knight or something, I'll I'll, I'll do it there. Um, looking for a review on the general contrast and color, as well as some feedback for painting fur on smooth, soft areas, such as on the horse bits. Okay, let's take a look. So first of all, obvi, I love the color. You're in pure synth wave tones here, so you know, I dig it. Uh, pink, green, electric blue. I'm in like Flynn. You're selling me. Um, yeah, I mean, I think overall looks good. I would push the purple shadow on the pink a little farther. Uh, so I'd bring that, I'd, I'd increase the volume of that purple shadow just slightly. It really shows on him. Where, like, imagine if this purple just ran up a little bit more, was a little bit darker down here. I think that would really sell me, um, kind of all the hair. And you can see it here, especially, like, on the cat, on his hair. Like, it's still kind of flat. So a little more of that, I think, would be good. Um, going back to this guy, uh, again, look for places to hide that pink around a little more. Like, it's just up in the hair here. I think we could work that into some other places. Um, like, make this pony have pinky... Like, maybe you did a little, but it could have gone farther. I'm trying to tell. Hard to see. Maybe, like, pinky socks. You know, that kind of thing. I love the blue. I think that works fantastic. Um, that came out great. Weapons look great. More pop on the helmet, though. The helmet looks a little flat. So I'd say a little bit more on that. Now, as far as texture on the horse bits go, yeah, I mean, let's go back to the horse. It, 
it's okay. You've got the right idea. It's all a game of hashes and slashes and stuff like that. So just more of that, um, I think, is the answer. Like, you want lots of little thin things, and then you glaze over the top. I will add it to my tutorials. But overall, I'd say push the horse a little farther, some bit, some lighter bits, things like that. The blue looks stunningly good, um, and just push a little more contrast into the hair. I think that's what I would tell you there. Okay. Next up, Sean. Uh, Self-challenge for this piece was just going to be a sketch style and color glaze, but halfway through decided to go with a full Grisaille style as I love the overall look. Uh, sure. So we're going, we're going black and white with just a little bit of red. Yeah, it's always, it's one of the toughest things to paint. Um, it's an interesting look, and I think this is great. It's fun to switch it from this to black and white. Ostensibly, if you're nailing it, you should see very little change, right? Because in a mono picture, it lives in the grays, right? So the basic thing I would tell you here is I think you're in a nice place. Good texture capture, stuff like that. I like the red. I would pop... Like, I would pop that red needs to be shockingly bright, and you may want to think about two catches of it somewhere. Um, so like, yeah, I like the headband alone, you might want to think about a second red catch or or really popping that one up to be bright. Like, maybe it could be you know the headband and like something and like the hilt on his sword or something, you know, just a couple spots that way we have a little bit more visual interest. The other thing I would say is just it's more it's a glazing and smoothing game on things like the sword his armor. You're good. We could go farther. But I love the exploration of the piece. It's super fun to paint in black and white, and I think you caught something here. Little bit sharper edges. Keep pushing the, the whites up to even brighter. Like, make sure we're catching all these edges here on Mr. Cyber Samurai. I think that'll really help. Okay? But overall, I mean, I think you're, you're good. You're living in the grays. That's where you want to go. Little bit more contrast. Push it just a little bit farther, and I think you'll be in a good place. Overall, cool stuff, man. I dig this. I dig this kind of experimentation. It's wonderful. All right. Frank, uh, bringing us big Catacross himself. Uh, says he wanted to go for the, you know, him as the main focus, which it does. Look at the picture right now. Boom. You can see Catacross clearly. So he is the focus of the thing. He made him bright. That's good. Um, so I think that honestly worked. Uh, first attempt using a white ink and Zenithaline with our airbrush. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I think overall this looks really good. Um, again, your real key here is going to be just tonal variation. The rest of the piece from a, from a, from a composition perspective, I think it works. His little servants are all kind of dark, but things like the black is very flat. We'd want to pop that up. I would also say you, with Catacross, this belt piece should have been red, um, just because that would actually balance him and draw even more attention. Red draws the eye a great deal. You're wasting an opportunity here by making this black. It could, if it's red, it's it's giving me much more visual interest. And by the way, creating a full line around him of the red. I would also pop his red to be brighter. So give me some nice, really strong, intense reds around his shoulder, the edge here, and this part here. So he's framed in that red intensity. So it's the bright, he should have the brightest red right now, Mr. Samurai does. And it should be him. Because again, everything should be drawing me to him. But in general, beyond that, it's tonal variation across, like, the base, in the weapon, just stuff like that, I think, is where you'd want to be. Okay? But uh, overall, very cool. Looking great. Okay, Juan Francisco Gonzalez Hidalgo, the best name in the PMP, showing up with another heavy metal contrast marine series where he's using... Uh, He's using all contrast paints to paint all the heavy metal style marines. It's a really awesome project, and he's doing a great job. Yeah, I mean, my honest advice for you here, man. You know, I said want to you know focus on the on the on like the edge highlighting here. Um, it's you know he says he pushed himself. It feels like he did. It really feels like he did, and it really worked out. I mean, man, these edges are crisp, son. Yeah. I, I mean, you know, maybe a little there. A couple. I mean, like, it's always tough. Edges are never perfect. I mean, for what you're aiming at, I would call this a tremendous success. You could push your deep shadows a little more. Maybe think about a little black Templar uh, mixed in with some of your, your blue here you're using for that part of the contrast and creating some really nice deep, nice deep shadows in the low part here, up under here. Just pushing that a little more so it's a contrasty contrast marine. But, I mean, on the whole, I think he's a freaking great-looking ultramarine, man. I think you... 
You nailed it. And good choice for the green plasma to set aside from the blue marine so it didn't all blend together. That's a, that's a solid choice. It's a solid choice right there. Clean, crisp. Yeah, I dig it, man. This has been an ultra success for you. Okay. Um, Sergey, uh, happy holidays to you as well. Want to step outside of your comfort zone? Uh, so is you trying to use all non-metallic metal? Some feedback on that for the armor and sword. Also tried to make a better face of more subtle colors. Uh, okay, so let's take a look. And then, of course, on the base. So we can go farther with the skin. More more tones, more reds, more purples uh, in general. Uh, I think the non-metallic metal is good. You're running some nice contrast. Yeah, it looks like we're going far enough from light to dark. So I think that's all in the correct place. Um, I think we just need to... It's just a smoothing game. It's the glazing game to smooth it all out. But overall, you've got nice from like white to black. The edges are good. Make sure you clean up some of those edges because not they're all kind of stippled and like some of them should have a little bit more of a line aspect to it where it's really catching a sharp reflection. But overall, yeah, I think it's just glazing to smooth it out. I think you've really got the colors down. They look nice. They got a good blue infusion in them. Ties together with the water. That all works really well. So yeah, that's what I'd push. Also with eyes, make sure you've got a nice dark line around the eye. He still looks like there's no... My eyes have very dark circles around them. Human eyes are very dark. And I just mean because I don't get enough sleep. That's true. But I mean like the actual eyeball. So make sure you've got... You want darkness around the eyeball in there. So shouldn't just go from like skin to, you know, white gray. All right. Mark Tan. Uh, also happy holidays. A lot of people are getting some work done around Christmas. Uh, what could you do better with the base? And do the purples and oranges work in the scheme? Uh, lastly, is there anything, uh, and then highlight placement, is there anything better you could do with the face? Okay. Uh, all right. So does the, or let's start with the, the question. It's, oh, is his hand upside down? That's a weird placement, but okay, sure. Why not? Um, does the orange and blue work? Yes. A hundred percent. They're complementary colors. They are two of the most rich eye catching colors you can use together. Now, that being said, the hand going totally into the bright red orange thing, Mm, probably a little too much there. Okay, just relax your eyes. Where are your eyes drawn? Don't look at anything in particular. Let your eyes unfocus. Where do your eyes look? I mean, it's the hand. I can only see the hand, right? So we need to like, don't ever make the bright, it's it's red eye get catching. Very Brain naturally draws to red areas. It's yellow, brightest lumosity or whatever of a color. So like, it's a double tap of making me pay attention to only one thing. If that hand was just blue, he this would be a much stronger piece. Because um, the orange and yellow works fine. You just want to make sure it's set against... Uh, it's the minor element. Whenever you're using completely complementary colors with ultra contrast, one of them needs to be in recess. So, like, you can use orange and blue, but then he has to be dominant blue with hints of orange or whatever. Or strike it reverse it, you know, whatever, right? If it's mostly orange miniature, you want very light touches of blue. The eyes look really good. Yes, you can go higher, both higher and lower. Um, the abs look pretty good. I think those are in the right place, but the face needs more general shadows cast. Pop those highlights up a little more, especially along like the eye ridges, things like that, the nose. Um, the nose might actually be bright enough, but like the rest of his eye ridges, the top of his head, we can go farther. Okay. Uh, but yeah, overall, I mean, I think it's good. Uh, you can do a little more texture with the wings, stuff like that. Make sure you get those nice and smooth. But like when I say texture, I mean like bringing thin lines down to capture that, that momentum in the wings. But overall, I like it. I like the burnt ground into that. I think that looks nice. Um, yeah, there's my advice. Hope that helps, Mark. Very cool submission, man. All right. Tristan, uh, f first submission, paying this up for the Christmas Advent Challenge. Uh, furthest he's taken Miles paint job before. I'm really happy with the progress. Uh, so here are some things. Freehand, first attempt, realistic basing, first attempt, rusted metals, overall composition, snow. Okay, so many things. <laughs> All right, so let's kind of move around here. Snow, uh, snow, snow, snow. All right. Yeah, snow looks fine. Uh, branch it out a little more. Have a little more light dusting in places. It's a little too minimal right now to have those kind of piles, so we could spread it out a little more. Okay. 
Freehand, like on the candy cane and stuff, it's a tough one to do because you got to do an even pattern. More work to get it balanced to make sure it go back with your initial color, kind of smooth that all out. I mean, it sells, but you want to make sure it's nice, even layers, which means you're going to draw it on. It's going to be wrong. You go back with your white, you correct. You go back with your red, you correct. It's a lot, a lot, a lot of back and forth. Okay. Um, I think the metals are fine. I think you want to just kind of push a little farther. Um, careful with having, so like his sack, let's see if I can, yeah, there you go. It's got a little bit of too much of a shine to it. Like that's light reflections. We want to make sure that's nice and matte down. Some more stippling and texture and stuff in there could also help. Um, I think with the metal, if we're going to go rusted, it's got to be a little more brown tones. Rust gathers toward the edges. So, you know, kind of go watch some of my, if you've watched, you probably watched them already, but rewatch some of the rusted metal videos. I think you'll see that difference there. The skin looks good. I like all the red in his cheeks and his nose, his lip. That's A+. Plus. I dig that. That looks good. Um, the horns are okay. We could go a little darker on the part near his his body, but overall it's good. Uh, the beard that you sculpted there looks good. We could push a little more gray tones, kind of darken that up a little bit uh, so we have a little bit more shadow. Keep the white up near his face so it really pops up here. Have it come into darkness and then get bright again. Kind of that movement will also then draw attention up to the face where you want the attention. Uh, <laughs> I like the free hand on the banner. I think that works fine. Um, yeah, overall, I think it's good. I So those would be my main piece of advice. I hope that helps. All right, so now we have some of my favorite stuff. Namely, it's time to slanesh it up in here. Uh, so... Um, Chad is mainly looking for feedback on the skin. Doesn't think it's alien enough. I'm not too sure about the flowers in the base. So let's take a look at the skin. Um, I, you can push the skin again, more purples and stuff like that, more tones. You can also work in some blue into the shadows. That will make it feel very alien and cold, which is what you're going for here. Cause this is guys on like a snowy area. Light glazes. I mean, like I'm talking super light, like make it a blue purple, something like that. Get that in there. And I think you'll really pop that up. Now, as to the flowers, the only reason they feel weird is because they're set apart from the snow, right? Um, it's cool to use the flowers. That's fine. Um, you know, this this weird model has is there's flowers in this alien world that bloom in the winter. There are flowers that bloom in the winter. Um, a little bit of dash of snow on top of them where it's gathered on them, I think, is mainly what you'd want to do. So that's my piece of advice. I would also look at, I mean, you can see the sort of the contrast I'm talking about. If we had more blue and purple shadows in there, that would really help. Now... As to the, I would also look at making the claws go into a darker color because they still feel kind of same as the skin. So if you push the color of them, it'll also frame the model a little more. So there you go. Hope that helps. Uh, Reinhardt bringing us an interesting comparison. The last model he painted uh, after many months of working on this and the first one next to each other. So let's take a look. And, and we're going to jump. I want to look at this in, in sort of two stages. Um, so... Here we've got, this is the new one, this is the old one, um, which I think works a lot better. The addition of the blue into the power elements and stuff like that I think works really nice. Let's go down to the one where we fix is the engine coil, so they're also blue. This is great. I like this. Really makes the the marble feel more like marble. Like, let's look back here real quick. This green doesn't feel as dark here as it does here. That's a trick of the eye because you've worked this high contrast in. I think that really sells. So I think I like I like that a lot. Um, I like the blue in here. The the blade has a much nicer pattern of random variation and highlights. So I dig that. One of the things I notice is we still want to make sure the edges of the metal are nice and sharp. So like make sure you're picking out the edges here, here the uh, the uh, Aquila or whatever on his shoulder. Make sure we're still getting those edges nice and crisp with like a fine silver or something like that to really show that they're catching and reflecting the light the edges of metal very much catch the light and reflect them so but overall it's great to see this transition the shadows the variation on this metal looks so good you've really come along i mean it's obvious the journey here and i think it's it's looking really wonderful man all right next up johannes uh brings us mac tonight uh i always love this guy mr Moonface. um so looking for mainly feedback on like the face and stuff like that so I think it's good. Um, I think we can go farther, especially on the tongue. So like 
One of the fun things you do here is you take these back tendrils into red, but then we don't. But then we just leave the tongue yellow. If this tongue went into red, it would feel it would actually contrast much better against the green complementary colors and all that. Um, but in addition, it would help it pop out and define the face more. Same with the teeth; they should have a little more variation in them from top to bottom. Make sure you have bone always. You know, should have a, a journey it's running on. Um, so you want to make sure you do that. As to the blends, I think you did a good job with it. I have no issue with any of that. I would bring this down into an even deeper green and this out into a pink. And I think there you go. Now, you know, it really make your the focus is already on the face. We don't have a problem with that. This guy is you're definitely looking at his big, bright, you know, moon head. Um, but I think that would would definitely help as far as that goes. So there's my feedback on the on the targeted sort of area you were asking about. All right, um, Paul uh, talking about our big Doom Bowl here, and he's uh, this is his first time in the monthly review, so awesome. Uh, you know, he, he's thinking about competition in the future, and he wants to know what are the things that you need to improve the most. Sure. So let's talk about it. This is a I, first of all, I would never do this piece or something like, like for competition. He's too closed and too kind of samey in the materials. Um, you want you want, like comp good competition makes tend to be more open and. Uh, tend to have lots of different materials to experiment on, uh, you know, like stuff like that. But let's get into it. Uh, so I would, first of all, blood effects should be used exceedingly sparingly on anything in competition. I understand why you would do this for your army because it's fun and it's cool to make it like a doom bull who chop through stuff. But just be really careful with that stuff. It's it it has to be very purposefully applied. Um, now onto the real painting of it. It's, it's the same story of, like, variation. So the bone here and here. Very flat, very samey throughout, right? So push that farther. Same down here with his toes. We got a nice thing. More striations to really pull that all out. With the skin tone, more color, more tone in the skin. So, again, more additions of, like, reds and purples will make him more visibly interesting. Same with his face, um, where we really want to pop that out, right? So here you can see on his back how it's... It's much more kind of flat in the colors we would want. We want to work in more of those mid-tone transitions. Bring more hue into this, right? He's You have these bright red straps on him, and that's kind of the only color. So on the, sh on the shots where we can see it, it's all we can see because it kills everything else. Uh, as far as the basing goes, um, again, you know, just making sure things are smooth. Like every every part of a competition miniature has to be at the highest level. So, like, the basing just being kind of some dry brush and some skulls, that's not going to fly. We got to have that up at the same level. We got to have color in that dirt. We got to have the bo the skeletons on the the skull, sorry, down there being, like, smooth. Um, if there's texture, it needs to be intentional texture, stuff like that. That would be kind of my main advice. More hue, push it more as far as that goes, and more just tonal variation, especially throughout things like the skin, the hair. Like, that black hair needs a color in it, right, where it's catching something. Uh, that would be my sort of main feedback for you. But but overall, it's good. Like it's definitely a really nice piece. Um, I would I think this piece would honestly work better with dark horns going to light because it would frame the face better. Um, the tips of the horns being dark, they just get lost. Um, whereas if this was black, it would actually contrast. The horns would contrast really well against the ear. Right now, his back, his horn, his ear, his face are all like the same color all the way down. Whereas if this were nice and dark, it would break up that space really well. And if this came to light, it would show against the face really well and frame the face, right? So that's the kind of stuff you want to focus on. All right, Seng, uh, going for a higher highlight on all your colors. Let's take a look. Uh, we're definitely getting there. I think that's good. I think your highlight's at the right place. I think we need more soft shadows. Um, so again, Seng, so like the gold still seems flat. We need more color in that. I think your highlights are kicking. I think they're in the right place. I think we need more variation on the uh, on the, the low point. So some more soft, subtle grays in the white, some more deeper colors in the reds, and definitely more sepia shading in general in the golds. Also, drill out them gun barrels. You thought I wasn't going to notice. I'm always going to notice. Drill out your gun barrels and make sure we scrape that flash off of right here like that we've got around the side. Always drill your gun barrels. Uh, A, B, D. Always be drilling. G, B. Gun barrels. Okay. 
But yeah, real cool. I like them. They're very striking. It's a great color scheme. I've seen it before. And I think your highlights, you've pushed them into a really nice place. I dig them. They have a real good pop to them. All right, Benjamin. Uh, so what he's mainly looking for here is feedback on the face and hair, as well as the general contrast of color. Sure. So um, let's talk about the, the general contrast of color. Yeah, I mean, I think this is good. I think the hair is great. Very chibi, very bright. You've got nice striations in there. Um, a little bit of it, especially around the top of her head, like right here, you might be able to push it up even a little bit farther into an ivory scheme to really show where it's reflecting around her face. Maybe the same with like these two top parts, the braids here. It's very evenly highlighted throughout. Uh, and you may want to try to create a little more directionality in the light. Um, as far as the face goes, I dig it. The eyes look real chibi. We need a little bit more darker area around them. So like more separation of the eye from the face. The iris looks fantastic, but I need more color around here. Um, like deeper, your eyes have a lot of color change that happens toward the center of your nose. So bringing more shadows down there, a little more red tones, stuff like that, purple tones, things of that nature, soft, subtle gray to, to on the underside to represent the orbital, the orb, orb like, whatever, the orbish nature of eyes, the Ray Orbison nature, the Roy Orbison nature of eyes. Um, uh, as far as the cheeks go, she looks very nice, very cold. She's wearing a parka cause it's, you know, it's chilly out and she's got her little mittens on. So I think that all works well. You gave her that nice cold skin tone. Um, the glazes in the, in there, in the cheeks are nice. I think we could pull a little more red subtly back here. Uh, and I think that would be good. Same with maybe, um, maybe a little more in here as well on the underside. That's kind of the stuff that jumps out at me. But overall, it's it's a really cool mini. And the hair is is fantastic. You really did a great job with that, Ben. So I think that's great. All right, Cole. Uh, giving us Nurgle with a dark, gory, horror-esque theme. Uh, okay. Uh, all right, so let's take a look. Um, yeah, I mean, it's it's definitely gross. No doubt about that. Um, again, with the blood effects, like, I get it. He wanted really a lot of blood. Okay, that's fine. I get what you're going for. This picture tells the story. The skin and the armor need to be farther apart to create more interesting separation. Stippling of black green into there. So, oxidized stuff will often have deep blacks and deep black browns in it as well. And that's the problem. When we flip to the black and white, there's not enough travel between the skin and the armor to make it really stand out. And that's what we're seeing here. Like when you just kind of relax your eyes, it's very hard to see the difference between the skin and the armor because of the color that they have in them. So I'd say push that farther, get, you know, more stippling, more rusty, crusty, dark brown, black goodness in the armor will actually help and work. And it's like it, copper doesn't just oxidize green. Um, it also, if you go look at old statues, there's lots of like black spots and things like that to get in there. So really sharpen those, more bruising around the edge of the armor, pull that skin into a deep purple right around the edge of where this old beaten gross armor is. And that'll really, that'll help again, sell the contrast difference between the two sections, right? Uh, so there you go. But overall, I mean, it's a super cool guy. I mean, this is a, it's obviously a, this, this fig is just amazing from Creature Caster. So that's what I would recommend. Did a great job. Okay. Joshua um, says he's a beginning to intermediate painter, looking to move up. Uh, not happy with the skin and is the first time doing armor like that. So let's, yeah, sure. So let's talk about this. Um, so my best advice on the armor is, is it feels like you were using just like the contrast paint there. I think we could go f either farther into a true non-metallic metal or just use the basic metals would be my advice. Now, as far as the skin goes, we need more variation and it needs to be not, it, it, there's too much pink in here that doesn't balance and doesn't have enough travel, right? Like you've got this nice dark purple, but we need it to be smoother. So my basic advice for you, Josh, to move up to your next level is work more on that tonal variation through glazing, okay? Um, you may also want to think about more texture. Like he, he has the little dots on him. Go farther with that. Make your own dots. Like don't let the sculptor just tell you where the dots have to be. Do it with paint. Now, I would stay away from the green on the skin. That doesn't sell as much when, like, what we really need is the blue pulled down more. 
because we have this one of the reasons the other reasons the skin is challenging is because you have this like hyper bright intense saturated blue and it goes straight into this hyper intense pinky flesh and they're completely separated right whereas if the dots were blue and you went in and added your own demon dots as well just which is just means you literally take a paintbrush and stipple some dots on it's, you know easiest easiest free hand in the universe and you pulled those two together if you used the skin tone as the highlight color in your blue now we've got a meshing of the two sides okay so that's my advice work on pushing your contrast farther more value contrast throughout and then uh bring up that total variation through some smoother glazes and that'll help you mute out some of those very saturated colors all right wonder woman uh so uh uh taigo says he painted this as a gift for his sister last month i got the feedback to push the skin shadows farther how are we doing uh so let's take a look we're getting there more basic answer farther um like keep keep pushing you know and and with the eyes and stuff what could you have done in 30 minutes more highlight and tonal variation in the hair light a couple some light glazes in the skin especially around the legs in this area here up under her arms in her muscle structure like she's you know she's very fit so like having those muscles well defined same with in between the fingies never forget fingies and most importantly in the face like paint those eyes have more shadows the face tells the story of the miniature that's where we're looking that's where our eyes should be drawn to we need much more tonal variation on the face so if I had 30, if I had 30 minutes to spend on this, if you asked me, like I had 30 more minutes to spend, I would spend every minute on the face period, because that's the story of the miniature, right? That's where I would live. So that's my best advice for you. All right, Alberto, uh, greetings from Italy. Well, hello, greetings from the homeland. Uh, first submission with this model tried is first NMM. Any help is appreciated. Sure. So I have videos on NMM. I would highly recommend you go watch them. I mean, the basic story here with the NMM is it doesn't travel far enough. Go reference either my videos I've done on non-metallic metal or the um, the linked video below uh, because we need much, 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 much further contrast. Like we've got to run a higher distance here. Also, I would be, again, as always, careful with the blood effects. Like they can just be... So I did a recent video on blood splatter might have come out after you posted this. Um, so go check that out. It'll show you how to get a more realistic kind of blood spatter pattern. Um, but with a non-metallic metal, more deeper browns, more higher highlights, more sharp edges. We just, right now, you're living, if one is the brightest and five is the darkest, you're living completely in like three and four. We need to go way, way, way out. Okay? So that's my basic advice. I do like the skin tone a lot. I think that looks nice. We could go a little farther, but overall, we've got a nice run there. You got a nice push to highlights. His face needs the same level of variation and detail you did with the abs here. So always make sure the face is the most most <laughs> interesting part of the model. All right, Daniel Rodriguez. Uh, so uh, this guy, this big giant monster. He's not really a monster. He's a machine. But yeah, this guy's awesome. First time doing so much metal, first big mecha armor, bases, airbrush, TMM, Vallejo metal color, but I trade various kind of metals with glazes of inks and paints over it. Uh, at the end, the TMM effect is very subtle. Questions are, what's the priority to work on, fix, improve, or change? What did I do really well so I can validate some improvement? And uh, sure, absolutely. And thank you for putting together a wonderful picture here of the combination. Okay, so, you know, let's take a look at this guy. I think this is really nice. Um, I think this guy looks great. He has a lot of good uh, variation. I love all the inks over top of the metals. I think you're you're rocking with that here. That hard purple tone really works for me. Using the variation of the metal, but with the purple over it, I'm digging the heck out of it. So, number one thing I would do to pop this up. Like, are, are we making progress? Yes. We have wonderful variation in these in the real metals that are still showing, too, by the by. Like, look at how dark we get here up to this light. Mm, great. What we need to do is pop them high highlights up a little higher. Let me point out a couple areas to you. The edges need to be sharper catches. So we need to go back and catch those edges with some really, really crisp, thin paint. Um, we just didn't catch enough edges here far enough. Um, secondly, the gun barrels. Having the center point of these where they'd be heating up and sort of plasma-y 
would be a great place to catch it with like a bright like you did here on the gun. Let's go back to the gun real quick. Uh the the uh this like edge you did on the gun, that looks great. I'd love it if in the barrel we had the same high highlight. Okay. Um the central figure being in red is good. It draws the attention there. I have no issue with that. That being said, you may want to place a couple other spots of red around the miniature, like hide things with a stripe or a design or something, or these lights on the shield can be red or you know, something. Like, just so there's a little bit more minor, minor elements of the red. That way it doesn't feel so stark. It's good to draw attention, but we generally want to get a little bit more of it than that. It's okay to have it for a strong pop element that draws the eye, but you want to focus in a little bit more on your compositional balance. So that's my suggestion. That and like your popped edges, I think, are the highest spot. But no, I think you did that. The color's really well. The ink's nice. It shifts well. You caught your good highlights with a variation in the metal and then worked over it with the inks. So I think that all sells great. I really dig that. Yeah, I think that looks good. I think the guns look really awesome too. I like the way you captured the like energy feeling of the sort of gun there. So I think that really works out well. Okay, Ryan uh, Ryan says, first time posting here. More to come in the future. Well, welcome. Uh, so some feedback. Sword handle. White may have been a bad color choice. I don't even need to go in the picture. It was. It's too bright. <laughs> yep. Yep. Should have been the same red as everything else. Like you already had a bunch of red cloth. It just should have been that red. It would have balanced the figure more. Sword blade. Tried to make it look blade serrated. It's very straight, so I was not sure what else to do with it. Yeah, sure. We can talk about that. <coughs> red ribbon. On top, it blends in with the neck. So tried to black line. Doesn't make it stand out too much. Um, overall, what to focus on. Sure. So overall, the story is the same as much as anything. More tonal variation, especially on the green. It's kind of flat there. But as well, here would be my other thing. The shell is a big offender of this. It's really samey, right? Um, I need more high highlights, more directional highlights. Make sure the elements of the miniature are better separated. Like the black line might be a bit far. You could use a D. I like a. You can use a softer line. You could use a really dark green black so it looks like it's the skin and kind of push some shadows near it but like the fingies here like we've talked about many times there needs to be a hard separation between the bone and the skin so one of the things i would tell you is just harder areas and shadows separating everything same with the eyes we go we don't have a nice hard line around the eyes what you generally want to do is i the way i one of the ways i start is i create the almost the hard line of the areas i'm separating so like i start with a pretty intense dark purple brown black ink and like we'll come in here and create this edge and then i'll push shadows toward it of a slightly lighter color and then slightly lighter right and so it ends up feeling like this natural transition to the dark deepest part that's the way you can avoid this so you could start with a black line but then you push some deep green right up to it so it feels like you're just hitting that the wall of a natural shadow same with between the shell so that would be kind of my main piece of advice for you there. Uh, just better separation of the elements and keep pushing that contrast, especially on the face, you know, here on his nose, above his eyes, some more like skin tone and or yellow type stuff in there to really push that contrast up. Okay. As far as bone texture goes, uh, I have a section on bone in the related video. So yeah, go watch that. Oh, the blade. Yeah, the serrated is fine. I think that works. You could push even some sharper highlights, get yourself some nice thin metal, you know, Vallejo metal color silver and a couple more serrations. Run, it does have a center line, so you can run shadows up on one side, you know, or something and push a highlight. Like here, you can have a high highlight next to a shadow here and here you can have a little bit of a light reflection where it's catching light directly off the ground. That kind of NMM tricks in TMM is the other way you can really push. Okay, Bob brings us a Crypt Marine conversion, Space Marine with Flesh Eater and other bits. First time creating a competition model. Looking to bring to LVO and would love feedback on what I could do to improve. Sure. So I looked this guy over and the general advice I have for you would be much the same, like on the paint cleanliness part. Um, it's it's a lot of different pieces going on. It certainly is, is a, a strange figure with the, the big monstrous arms coming out of him. I, I would be concerned about proportion. Like I understand you're going for a nightmare creature, but, like, he's really out of proportion, probably too much. Now, that being said, if you like the nightmare thing, I'm cool with it. Keep it. 
no issue. Where you're, Let's go to this one, because let's go to your black and white. It's going to tell the whole story. Notice that the skin and the face and all this, like, again, we just don't run the variation as much as we need to, right? It all looks very similar in color tone. I need deeper shadows in the arms. Maybe some texture since that's flesh. Same with his pumpkin head. Should come down and go darker, right? Really get into some nice brownish type colors in the bottom of there. And then finally, just cleanliness. The best advice I can give you on a model for competition is cleanliness and smoothness. So like here, we've got paint kind of out of place. Here, we got paint out of place, right? Where this yellow is on here, if it's not on here. Everything needs to be clean, clean, clean. The number one story for competition is cleanliness in your painting application. So go through, push some of that tonal variation out, and then really make sure those elements are nice and separated. All the paint is cleanly applied, that we have dark to light, dark to light, nice shadow to light line separation. I think that's where you want to go to really push it up. Okay. Uh, but best of luck at LVO, man. It's a great, uh, it's a great convention, and there's some really good people who will be there. So I wish you uh, all the best, my friend, and look forward to seeing more. It's a really awesome, crazy conversion. I do, I do love. You know, you you are just uh, making a true nightmare creature here, and I dig the heck out of it. All right, Tebow brings us the last piece of his Iron Jaw army, uh, his big mega boss on Maw Crusher. Push the paint job a little. The goal was to get it to the table quickly with a decent result. What other quick tricks could have been done? Well, let's talk about it. Quick tricks. Okay, so uh, other quick tricks that could be done. Um, I think some quick, soft, feathered glazes on the underside of the wing, like bringing them down into a, a blue-purple, and then you literally just feather it out. One, two applications, and you're rock and roll to create some of the same variation you have up here, over here. Uh, maybe a little bit more on the skin of him and then a little bit of the highlight up here on like the bone, pushing these big bones up higher. Uh, and then a little bit of light, more light on his face to really draw the attention up to the mega boss. Cause he's the, he's the star of this show. The mall crushes his mount. He's the star. You want to make sure you got the light really, really focused up there. And that's where it is. If I was going to offer you some quick tips, I think that'd be probably what it is. Everything else would be pretty time-consuming. Like, the bone striations could be more, but God in heaven are the bone striations on this model infuriating and annoying and endless. So that would be kind of my main focus. Little higher highlights here and on the bone to frame him. I like the back of the armor. That has a nice hit on it. So I think that's good because that draws, that's good light there. Um, maybe even push these two bones up really, really high. That way we create a nice complete circle around this is the point we want to look at you know that kind of thing but overall i love it man this has been a great journey for you with the ij army and i, I love to see it come to a close with with a with a beautiful beautiful final piece love the blue love the the sort of martian tinted base it's great all right alex weir um curious how to make his green skin better mixed in flesh tone for the highlights but it didn't really give the contrast you were looking for yeah so let's take a look um He's a little far away for me to really tell, but the answer is in shadow, not in highlight. So first of all, a little bit of pinky flesh tone into the nose will really help and around the lips. That will help contrast the face. My other advice would be take some hull red or something like that, mix it into your green and bring your shadows down. I think the flesh tone works well, but we need a deeper, more organic, richer green on the bottom to pull it down. So that's my best advice for your skin tone. Other than that, just quick other notes I notice uh, when you're doing the candy cane gun, make sure you go back with your white and smooth out your lines. Candy cane needs to be very, people love candy canes around Christmas time, but it will really be obvious. Like it's a very geometric recognizable pattern. If it's off, people will notice. So that's just the other thing that jumps out of me. Red looks good. Love the fur. You know, all that stuff looks great. So yeah, overall really cool. I hope that helps Alex. All right, um, Bartos brings us uh, some piggies, and he says he's using these as razor gores and frost sabers. Um, you know, I, I, he said he's going for a tabletop standard. I'll be completely honest, man. There's not much I would really change here for a tabletop standard. Now, what would I say? A little more darker separation between the fur here and his mohawk. So bring that a little darker so there's a nice line of separation. And then a little bit of more interesting color variation 
in the actual uh, in the actual piggy face. So work some pinks, purples down to his nose and here on the shadows. Those are the two big things that stick out to me. Um, so a little darker dark here and here, and then a little bit more pinky tonal variation into the, the nosy section um, where it gets a little more pink, a little red, a little purple, you know, something to make it really pop out. So there you go. Okay. Uh, and finally, Oliver, just trying to get back into painting. Well, welcome back. Um, glad to have you back. Uh, welcome any advice or tips definitely struggled with the skin could have made the base more interesting so you got some good color in the base but i agree like some tough some other elements of nature would really sell here the skin does so as i've said many times it needs a little more now i like the soft subtle red tones i think that's good we can push it a little farther but you've got some good reds you've got some good purples let's go a little farther on that and let's pop those highlights up a little more again thingy separation very important still notice that's not as dark as it could be and then the other thing is just on the green of the cloth and stuff like that. That feels a little flat. We could really pop that out by having a nice light edge to that green. I think that would be a good way to go. Um, same with her little bone knife she's holding. Just a little more like striations, variation, color in that I think would really help. Because right now it feels kind of samey. Um, but yeah, more variation in the skin, more reds, more purples, especially here toward her arm. You know, your your hand has a lot of color in it, right? Like, especially in between your knuckles. Like, I'm very pale and I'm sitting under, like, a very bright daylight bulb. But you can see how all the reds are in my hands, right? Like, that's the kind of stuff you want to work in there. She's, like, gripping stuff, right? And so we should see those, those colors in the skin. So, there you go, Oliver. Hope that all helps. Uh, that brings us to the end of the month. Fantastic month overall. Beautiful submissions from everybody. Thank you to everyone who submitted. I really, really appreciate it. Uh, wonderful stuff. I hope all the advice was helpful. I hope to see more from everybody in the months to come. Uh, so great job, everyone. If you're interested in joining us, again, link down in the description. Would love to have you along. Answer all the questions if you want to get in. But as always, folks, I really appreciate you watching this one. And we'll see you next time.